Welcome to our talk, um, What Remains from Köln. Um, T. Vicky Germain and I um, will make a little talk about it. This will last about one, one hour and 50 minutes, but we will talk about, I don't know, 45 minutes, and then we will open um, the floor for your questions and, um, and your comments. Um, I would like to introduce you to Tiviki Germain. She's a um, filmmaker and media activist and currently working intensively with displaced children here in Berlin. She's originally coming from New York, but now since a few years based in Berlin. My name is Ines Kappert. Um, I'm the head of the Gunda Werner Institute for Feminism and Gender Democracy of Heinrich Böll Stiftung. And I just started my job in August um, of last year. And before, some of, some of you might know, I was heading the opinion desk and the open ed page of the TATS for eight years. Um, this year started for feminists and anti-racists rather messy. I'm sure that you all remember, or that we all remember us being shocked about the sexual assaults in the New, New Year's Eve night. Köln, this we can say so far already, Köln became a symbol for a big outcry, not in the first place against sexual violence against women, but against the dangerous young men from an, another culture bringing sexism back to Germany. What's happening then in the media, in the broad media discussion, was quite remarkable, Vicky and I think. Um, because the discourses and chaining around this um, assaults against women um, were triggering not so much a discussion about sexual violence, the law situation in Germany, how um, how sexual violence, um, uncorruption is suited or is not suited. But the main discussion we had was, oh fuck, now we, now we not only have to take care of displaced persons, and, we, and with our um, bureaucracy this is a problem, now, now we also have to go back to like the old times where sexism was just accepted, because now the men the Oriental, the Arab, the black man coming back to Germany and bringing violence back. So Köln became a symbol for sexism and sexual violence as an imported product, not an pro uh, imported problem, not as a problem of the German society. But Köln also became a symbol of a very remarkable Mis and disinformation of the public. It started with the police. Um, you might remember that um, in the very um, in the in the beginning, the president of Köln police was saying, um, "Well, it was just a normal night." In the press conference, this was before he learned that via Facebook and the and the social media, um, a totally different story was told about the hundreds of sexual assaults against women. Then the story changed, the media cover in um, ARD and ZTF and also in, in, in the print media changed. Um, it was then um, internal report has been published saying that hundreds of shocked and um, crying women came to the police guys and uh, police officers talked about sexual um, assaults um, through male migrant groups. Then there was a discussion, has it been Syrians? Then the police officer or the police president said, no, 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 just North Africans, no Syrians. Um, then this again was twisted, and I don't want to um, annoy you with all the details, but what remains from Köln so far, what we can say, was a big confusion What happened there? Who are the, like, who were the men uh, really um, 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 committing crimes? Was it a crime? Is it, can it be sentenced or not? So what, what happened in, 
in the train station of the Domplatte in Köln at New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Um, and this confusion is also remaining until now. Until now, the media didn't give us a viable, um, sustainable picture about what happened. Something we should remember. Why is this not possible? Why we, don't st why, why we still don't know what, exact what exactly was there? And why the police wasn't able to keep order and to keep it a safe space for women? Why, 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 I mean, what is the problem? We do have lots of experiences with the soccer games where like, uh, more than 1,000 people are um, in a, may, might be in an aggressive mood. So what happened in Köln? We don't know so far. But what we do know is that in the run of the discussion about um, black men being now the problem because they are bringing back the sexism to Germany, the law of asylum has been changed again. So the fundamental right to ask for individual asylum has been undermined again, Asyl Kompromiss 2. Via the definition of safe countries, sichere Herkunftsländer, the asylum procedures can be shortened now, and this measure is of course used to reduce the numbers of refugees. Um, we can talk about the numbers um, also later in the discussion because of course there's, I mean, what about how many people are supposed to be here, it's still also very difficult to find out because in the, po uh, in the politics they are saying more than one million. I'm more going with um, pro-asylum. They are saying, yes, um, 1.1 million in 2015 um, applied, requested for asylum. But um, many, many um, went further on to Sweden at that time. So not everybody who um, requested asylum here stayed in Germany, there are no safe numbers about how many just passed through Germany to go further. So the number of pro-asylum is, is giving us, they are saying that about, round about 800 asylum seekers, um, or 800 people asking for the first time asylum in 2018, which is um, as much as never before in, in Germany, but given eight, more than 80 million um, in <laughs> old timers, inhabitants of Germany, what do we talk about? But it, um, the discussion was different, so if, if from a certain perspective you can say, okay, um, 800,000, normally 60% um, with the Syrians now are, are given asylum um, or shelter for at least three years. Um, so maybe 400,000, 500,000 people will stay, so what is the problem of, of 80 million people? But the discussion went completely different because, yes, we do have a problem and we have to discuss the problems we think we have. Um, another thing also I think very remarkable and I would like to remind you of is that not only the people, the, the persons um, via sichere Herkunftsländer like Afghanistan, a very safe, her um, a very safe country as we know, um, was um, was installed or defined. Also, the family reunion was put onto hold for two years. That means that um, is, so in the run of the discussion of protection of women, um, non-German women are put into a major risk because now the boats are full of women, of women and um, and children because they know that their, their husbands or sons cannot bring them here anymore in a legal way, so they have to take another way. So um, the discussion also led by the feminists, um, and this is because I'm a feminist, I'm, I'm mostly what well, I'm very much interested in, um, was leading to put thousands of thousands of women, non-Germans, into risk, if not to dead. And idomeni is just one keyword for that, what is also being not provoked, but facilitated in the run or in the aftermath of Köln. Let's go back to Germany. Because there's an, uh, another discrepancy I would like to highlight. So the police registered uh, 1,100 reports on New Year's Eve night, and 600 um, because of sexual assaults. But only 78 have been accused, 
So, das waren, also es, war, es sind 1100 ähm, Anzeigen eingegangen, 600 wegen sexueller Belästigung. Ähm, das Verfahren wurde eröffnet gegen 78 ähm, Menschen. 15 were put into imprisoning on demand, Untersuchungshaft und ähm, tatsächlich, and in fact, three, um, three, piece, three persons has, be, has been sentenced. None of them because of sexual violence or sexual assaults. All of them because of stealing, stealing a cell phone. Again, big confusion, because don't get me, don't get me wrong, I don't want to say that there hasn't been sexual assaults. But I, what I do want to say is we don't know, first, what exactly happened, but we also see that this, this was not sentenced, so why not? Huge outcry. We have to save our German women, their safety nets, that they can move in public without being assaulted. I'm 100% with it. But why the police and why the court didn't do anything in the aftermath then? This brings us to a, a next... I want just to highlight it because then we will see the video, um, video um, input of, of Vicky. But this brings us back to a very German-made problem, and this is um, um, that ungrabschen, like just t touching in a sexual with a sexual um, intention, isn't a crime in Germany. It's legal. It's only a crime at the working place. If you do, if someone does that in public spaces. It is not illegal. So all this saying that now that the newcomers are not knowing our rules, the newcomers bringing the problems is kind of <laughs> big lie. Because um, the problem we have here and, and feminists are fighting for it long before, long before Köln, and has nothing to do with the incidents in Köln, what happened in Köln, you know, that, that this law has been changed and put in, in accordance to European law, Istanbul Convention. Um, yeah, so um, again, a big mess. So what we would like to discuss with you and also to give you maybe some explanations what we think um, is how this how this can happen there, were, there has been an incident there has been women complaining there has been women attacked this is what we think so far um, but the whole discussion has been hitchhiked um, to to highlight has been hitchhiked to cut down the asylum or to go against asylum seekers and to go against migrants um, And um, supported by media and also the, the so-called quality media. And the question is, how could this happen? And where has been the outcry then? Noticing the big and rooted racism in Germany also represented and reproduced by German media. Um, in the pieces of paper that you received, that little packet, there are definitions. If there's anything that confuses you along the way, um, we are using the definition of black facing here to describe the act of objectifying and contextualizing in a colonial context people with a colonial effect. Um, so it's not just referring to the actual act of painting yourself and pretending to be what you believe a person of color is. One of the things that makes it even more complicated in this situation is that one plus one does not equal two. Um, crimes against women does not necessarily mean that laws against crimes against women are actually going to be affected, as Ines said. So in order to understand what's happening um, with Cologne, we have to look at it as a mathematical equation. Um, according to Einstein's theory of general, no longer a theory of general relativity, the observed gravitational effects between masses resulting from their warping of space-time. In physics, space-time is any mathematical equation that combines space and time into a single interwoven continuum. For today, you only need to understand a rough idea of interwoven things, not the whole of Einstein's wisdom. Let's replace the word space in space-time with the word mind. And the word time, let's call that history. With that, you get the word mind history. 
I know it's painful for some people to invent new words, but think of it more as developing a theory. Mind history, a model that combines mind and history into a single interwoven continuum. If I take this word, mind history, and allow for a little twist on Einstein's, Einstein's theory of general reality, you get, excuse me, Einstein's theory of general relativity, you get the general theory of reality. That is, the effect resulting from intersecting formal education, what we learn in school, with experience, and this can be observed through the warping of mind history. It makes sense when you think about it. Us, you, me, and everyone we know, we would be the building blocks of mind history. When we take our formal educations and our individual experience, those will represent masses, masses in the continuum. These masses allow for waves in our history. It influences our day-to-day -day and our history in the making. It also influences our collective future. That is powerful. So that would mean that my American formal education and my experiences in Germany as a cis woman, a feminist woman, an American woman, an activist, and a person of color of five foot seven inches and growing are not the same as yours. To understand our education, let's understand what we collectively know to be education. To do so, we need to hack into the modern day understanding of what education is. By doing this, we're gonna rely on the collective efforts of hipsters, nerds, language enthusiasts, really, really smart people and not so smart people. These are the people whose collective wisdom populates the meanings of these words as we use them today in Wikipedia. We all know that Wikipedia is the modern day social and historical novel for people interested in stuff, right? It's what Brockhaus was to thinkers when encyclopedias and lexicons were a thing. They're not a thing anymore. But as we know, as I learned in the third grade, encyclopedias are a great start, but they're never a resource. These are nie eine Quelle. So, according to Wiki, not Vicky, Wiki, Bildung. Bildung ähm, von ah, bezeichnet die, Form, die Formung des Menschen im Hinblick auf sein Menschsein, seiner geistigen Fähigkeiten. Education is understood to be the process of facilitating learning and acquisition of knowledge, skills, values, beliefs, and habits. Already the definitions differ. To understand my experiences, we also need to understand colonialism, that is European colonialism. Colonialismus wird die meist staatlich geförderte Inbesitznahme auswärtiger Territorien und die Unterwerfung, Vertreibung oder Ermordung der ansässigen Bevölkerung durch eine Kolonialherrschaft bezeichnet. Kolonisten und Kolonialisierte stehen einander dabei kulturell in der Regel fremd gegenüber, was bei den Kolonialherren im neuzeitlichen Kolonialismus mit dem Glauben an eine kulturelle Überlegenheit über sogenannte Naturvölker und teils an die eigene rassische Höherwertigkeit verbunden war. In English, colonialism is the establishment, exploitation, maintenance, acquisition, and expansion of a colony in a territory by a political power from another territory. It is a set of unequal relationships between colonial power and the colony, and often between colonists and indigenous peoples. You see, my experience makes me and many others in its aftermath, colonial aftermath, our histories, our independent nations, our languages and our cultures, a constant reminder of what that warped mind history actually is. The reminder to accept that when I say I'm from New York, you should probably not fight the urge to fill your curiosity at that moment 
Because the only answer I want to give to the questions like, wo kommst du her, is what did your grandpa say? In the hopes that your ancestors would have left word of where my ancestors were stolen from. So, this is the interactive part. Stand up if you recognize the life cycle of a butterfly. Wenn man anerkannt der Zyklus, Lebenszyklus von einem Schmetterling. Ja. Stay, stay standing, stay standing. If it bothers you that parts of this life cycle are missing on this photo, please sit down. If it doesn't bother you, it's okay to stand up for a few more seconds. Look around. You can sit down. <laughs> Those who remain standing, take a moment to take this in. Our education, our pocket dictionaries, Duden, Langscheidt, and media exposure have parts missing. Imagine how many people don't care. Imagine what that means. When parts are missing, simple math, of Anschwärzen times Imperativ equals Nordafrikaner divided by Araber times Ausländer cannot be seen. Our understanding of history, colonialism, its present day manifestations like Leonardo DiCaprio's Revenant, or most recently, as in two days ago, Diester SV a low league club from Lower Saxony region who decided that black facing would be a positive way to solidarize, solidarize with um, black people that were racially insulted and abused. Um, this shrouds over our knowledge and ripples and creates ripples that skew our own mind history. Mind history, remember, is a model that combines mind and history into a single interwoven continuum experience and education. And since German colonialism has been disconnected contextually from modern German education, colonial terms like the ones you received in that handout and concepts are floating around today unacknowledged, so much so that the basis of modern German knowledge makes it difficult to understand this theory of general reality. When Albert Einstein worked out his theory of general reality, he hoped that someone in his near future or a not so far future would not only understand but set out to prove his theory right. My only hope is that in time, the time needed to understand and act upon my theory of general reality happens within my lifetime. After all, it's just simple math. Das Verleumden und Verunglimpfen ist eine Anschwärzen. Wenn es um des eigenen Nutzens und Vergnügenswillens und aus gehässiger Gesinnung in der Absicht geschieht, gegen jemand bei gewissen Personen Verdacht und Misstrauen zu erwecken. So the microphone is actually not working for the public. Um, so if you have a question, um, please say it. We'll repeat it over the mic and then we'll answer it, if we can. Maybe in, in between you are um, still collecting your questions. Um, I can I can say that um, I w like um, I was quite surprised when this um, police officer or the second police president was saying that um, this kind of things that um, this um, this um, that. that men came so close and that um, to women and um, that also these gangs are now um, um, developed a new technique of robbing and sexually assaulting. Um, the idea of gangs has been also deleted after a while. So um, the, the organized crime assumption has been deleted from, um, has been taken back from BKA. So also this... Um, is part of these assumptions that couldn't be proved and has been taken out by the officially by the BKR after a while. Um, also, if, um, if you, I don't know if, uh, if you remember, but um, you put some pictures of um, a swimming pool inside 
Um, also in the aftermath of um, Köln, there was a um, prohibition against um, for refugees in some cities to go um, or to visit um, swimming halls because they are assaulting women. Just recently, um, the president of um, all swimming halls, swimming pools in Germany, gave a um, president der Bäder, der deutschen Bäderanstalten, um, gave a, um, a very interesting, very, very, very interesting, very complex um, interview, saying um, actually no. Um, that he's completely against this prohibition because, um, um, yes, um, in March there have been seven in whole Germany, seven times a problem with sexual assault, um, sex, sexualized molesting in um, German uh, swimming halls. One is connected um, to a refugee person, a displaced person. Um, this person was looking in a not um, acceptable way to a woman and he has been asked to, to leave. Um, the swimming hall, um, the swimming hall. The rest were Germans, but as we also seen, um, if we are talking about non-refugees, there is no definition given, like what kind of person is standing behind the crime. And uh, and he was saying that the real problem they do have now in swimming halls is that many newcomers don't know how to swim enough. So the the rescuing. Um, actions had to be um, intensified. So this is the, the problem they do have. It's not sexual assault. Um, I'm just giving you this example to see like this, this discourse of sexual assault is hitchhiked in so many ways and so quickly. And still the question is how this could work because um, I don't know how you're feeling. I didn't expect that. I think this is also one difference between <laughs> Vicky and me when I was saying, but this is not possible. I mean, come on, this is really something remarkable. And then normally you were saying, Ines, I can give you 100 more examples, but you as a white person just didn't realize it and wonder why. I think, um, I think one of the things that's interesting is the gaze. Um, I've been to the swimming pools in Germany and I can tell you that if I knew people could be kicked out for staring, I'm sure I'd be swimming alone. As a person of color, and a few of you in the audience would know what I mean, as a person of color, when you go to a swimming pool in Germany, the comments, the stares, and um, I have quick reflexes so I can't say that I've been touched, <laughs> but um, it's not uncommon. And I've also been to swimming pools with, um, with, with white colleagues that um, have interpreted the stares in the pools in, in ways that were very odd to me. Because the same stares that one may get followed with a comment from a white person is not perceived as dangerous or threatening as the bewildered stare of a person of color in a swimming pool that is new to them. I must admit that when I went to Germany for the first time when I went swimming, it was a very interesting and curious experience. Um, the bathing suits are really different sometimes, um, but also being in a context of mostly all white people is something that you have to get used to as a person of color who did not grow up in an all white context of New York City. Um, are there any questions, first of all, to the materials, to the theory, to the definitions, to the questions? What are your perspectives on what's happened with Cologne? I mean, as, as someone who's not a native German speaker, language stands out at me. So things like refugees being referred to as, or people of color, being referred to as um, sexual um, criminals or uh, bands of organized crime, clans, band language that you don't hear unless you're watching a movie about colonial times or Scotland 1400s. I mean, the type of language that's resurfacing right now is, is very curious and, and odd when you think about the reason why it's being brought up. 
Um, if you look at the handout that I gave you, um, a lot of this language was also used um, during colonial times and prior, around 1400, if not earlier than that, to describe um, Roma and Sinti people. And it's also a stereotype, a colonial stereotype that continues and persists today um, in Germany and a lot of European countries around the definition and understanding of Roma and Sinti peoples. No, yeah. I think, I thank you for that question. Um, the question is basically, um, how can, um, where can we see mind history in the examples that we've received? And also, how does the definition come together? Is that correct? Um, mind history, um, we're looking at the experience and we're looking at actual history, right? The experience that you have through education, through living, and things like this. That is what happens in your mind, right? The thing that makes us us. Then there's history, the thing that's, um, that's independent of us, the thing that's independent of interpretation, the thing that was, that we can look at, hopefully objectively, it doesn't really always happen that way, but we can look at it objectively and say, okay, this thing happened. Colonialism happened. It affects our mind. It affects our formal education. The lack of colonialism, colonial history in education, the lack of critical thinking around colonialism lets words like um, organisierte Kriminalität, Banden, Klanen, it lets, us, it lets it come back into our use of language and our understanding of the context that we live in today without questioning it. We know what these words refer to we may not know what they mean. And we definitely don't know the context in which they were used before. But we still remarkably understand and know how to use them correctly because they're part of our mind history. They're part of that warping that we've experienced because of colonialism. Does that make sense? Yeah. And maybe if I may add, if you remember the um, the cover of um, Focus and Süddeutsche Wochenendausgabe, when when um, they were they were shown, um, yeah, okay, this is referring to this one. Um, they were showing a white. The Focus was showing a white naked woman with open uh, lips and black hands on her naked um, body. So this is also like. I mean, um, directly referring to colonialist um, um, stereotyping that the black man is stealing the white woman. Um, this is um, then repeated, the colonial history and iconography has been then, of course, reproduced, repeated in the context of Nazi um, context, Nazi um, Herrschaft. And, um, and also what I was saying in the beginning that um, the, the discourse came out that sexism and sexual assaults is a problem coming from outside. It's also a way of blackfacing. Mm -hmm. And um, with very, very severe consequences because laws have been changed. Our das Grundrecht auf Asyl has been shrinked in the context um, of the, this kind of blackfacing Vicky was just outlining. Um, and not only the context of, of Azulrecht, I mean, the context of laws for foreigners in general, I am a foreigner, I am a migrant. So whether I come from New York, whether I dress like a hipster, whether whatever, these laws affect me as well. And this is, I think, the, the bridge that's not really created when it comes to these laws being adjusted and these laws being created. And it, this, I'm waiting for the moment when, when more of the, 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 I mean, we talk about waves, when the waves of hipsters are pulled into this as well, and, and they realize that these laws are being changed and they're affecting them as well. We're not the most marginalized groups of people, we're not the most disadvantaged, but we are also being affected. And unless we recognize the, the solidarity that we can offer towards groups of marginalized people, we'll see what happens. Hello, okay. Um, after this whole event, I've been thinking a lot about, um, since this is, I mean, we're talking about a racist discourse, mm -hmm. but of course, some kind of sexual molestation or harassment has happened. Mm -hmm. This is what we know. And 
So for me, the question has been and is still, how do we address sexism in certain, I would call it right now, so for me it's the more, less discriminatory way of saying it, uh, how do we address sexism in certain social milieus, let's say this way, in certain so social milieus without actually stigmatizing, without actually stigmatizing that certain group, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's called the ethnic group, the Arab, mm -hmm. or the religious group, the Muslim, blah, blah, which I think, to, when I discuss with my friends, for instance, and we have the same kind of discourse that we have right now, but then I'm lacking somehow, okay, so we're not talking about the sexism, which is happening as well. Mm -hmm. And it's as important as racism. Absolutely. So how, we do, how do we deal with this? So I'm missing that, so just your no, thoughts on that. Yeah. That you. is an excellent question. And um, personally, I believe that the, the way to deal with sexualism in, in um, sexualism, se sexism, <laughs> sexism <laughs> in, different, um, in different milieus is to deal with sexism in all milieus. Sexism is not a problem that is being imported to Germany. It is a problem, hold on a second, it's a problem that exists in Germany in the same mass as it does outside. When focus is placed intensively on one group versus another, the only thing it does is remove focus from the situation at hand. The best way to address sexism in Germany is to address sexism in Germany. If you address sexism in Germany, you address it on, in every milieu. It is not a cultural thing. No, sexism is a thing that exists on its agree, own. But still, you could argue, for instance, that um, sexism is, in varying degrees, exists in different social milieus. Absolutely. In, within the academic, field, sexism is very rampant. Within the um, Arbeiterfeld, sexism is extremely rampant. Within different age groups, sexism tends to be more or less. I mean, it's not a cultural context. Germany has laws against sexism because sexism is a problem in Germany. And um, also, to maybe to add, um, the, the hashtag um, Ausnahmslos is a way, I think, to address sexism without going into the um, racist trap. Um, I, I'm sure you're quite familiar with that. They're saying don't look at um, the, look at the at, at what at the deeds, what happened, and we ask for Ausnahmslose Strafverfolgung. And this Ausnahmslose Strafverfolgung is not guaranteed in Germany and actually this is the this should be the feminist um, or the democracy demo, the, the problem of of democrats that um, women in Germany are not protected fully against sexually assaults and this is why the reform of the um, um, you, you must maybe translate it um, of the Sexualstrafrecht the um, sexual violence laws is, is discussed since 20 years and is in the process, is in the making um, since um, Europe, where um, um, the Europarat, um, the European Council, has declared the so-called Istanbul Convention. Um, and this um, in convention is about to be applied in Germany. And that's why um, our um, Justiz Minister Maas has been forced mm -hmm to um, come up with a new proposal of sexual of um, sexuelle Strafgesetz. And, um, and I think this discussion must be led. And there are many details. I don't want to bother with you, you with that. But um, well, um, and for example, the Deutsche Juristinnenbund, uh, they are going against it. They are saying that the reform is not going far enough. Um, the FFF, um, Not Deutsche Notruftelefon, is saying it's not going far enough and giving examples and, and giving reasons for that. So this should be the debate in order to address um, sexual violence and also what we do with it and do we sentence it. But what happened, that the whole discussion was hitchhiked by um, 
the racism which is in rooted in the middle of the society because then we were talking not about um, German laws and police behavior and judges etc etc we were talking about other cultures um, 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 threatening women and um, yeah the the thing and this is such a great question um, and you can have your question right after but this is such a great question because it highlights it highlights something that that is very seldom looked at and you're absolutely right when it when you say how do we deal with this in certain milieus this is the same problem that we witness every single year at every single Oktoberfest and it is no different it is it has not changed anything the only thing that it's done is allow for on the one hand laws that have absolutely nothing to do with with violence against women to be put in place and on the other hand highlight the fact that although God knows how long Oktoberfest has been going on although these are things that happen every year this loophole still exists it is still socially acceptable for women to be groped for women to be touched for women to be sexually violated but it's only okay if they're white and drunk. Yeah. Um, so my question is about. Uh, so you, you uh, summarized these ten days of Tagesschau, and I won. And I think many of us wonder why this happened and who had the intention to do so. So we all, I guess, all of us, sat at home at our homes and we thought, how can this happen and how. How do they report each and every twist of the story? Because it's always the same, it was repeated over and over again. So is it simply, so we've heard two points. So one is people are not aware of uh, colonial, co colonial history and not aware of racism. And the second is there is a strong um, reluctancy against uh, sexism. No, uh, exact, uh, against fighting sexism, but is that all? Is that all? So is it simply these two things that make this mm -hmm. this um, story so explosive? Okay, um, it is not just this that makes it so explosive. Um, it's one of the things that that is highlighted for me in these videos. And again, my, I knew what I wanted to do when I was putting the video clips together, but when I actually saw them together, it, really, it was really disturbing. This is not the whole story. This is two sides of a many, 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 many sided coin. What scares me is that when you're, when you're making media, it's a choice. People who put media together are aware of racism. People who put media together are aware of colonial history. Um, I, was at, I was at the RTBF, which is one of the largest media conglomerates in Europe. They're in Luxembourg. They also partner or run RTL. Um, we, I asked them with a group of children, I said, well, how do you put your, your news together? And I explained colonialism to the kids, and they were like, Vicky, whatever. And I said, okay. So we asked. I said, how do you put your news together? And this is something that doesn't happen in Germany, the, the man told me. He said, um, well, first we look at what's current in the world. Then we look at what stories we've already had. We look to see if there's any new information that we can give, anything that's different from what we've already reported, to follow up. If there's no follow up, we then look at what's happening in our former colonies because people are interested in what's happening in the former colonies. Then we give something local. Outside of Germany, people use this information, use this knowledge, this history to inform themselves of what's going on. The danger that I see in news like Tagesschau, 15 minutes does not cover the world. 15 minutes does not even cover your news. What you don't see in Tagesschau, and please don't go to the bathroom, heaven forbid, you will miss a lot of what is, is of, of the message that they want you to hear. There are other things going on. 
there is other information that balances it out, but they're not giving a balanced picture. First of all, I want to thank you very much. Um, um, my English is not very good. I try to, um, um, to give a command because I'm a pedagogics and um, for 20 years I um, give information uh, to parents um, against sexual violence uh, against children. And uh, my experience is that um, instead of all good information in this evenings, um, parents ask at last, oh, why um, uh, the fremda, um, the foreigner, the stranger um, is a, um, the tater. And uh, uh, at last, we have to look um, in the families. Most of all, sexual violence is um, done in the families, in white families in Germany. And uh, I, I do also um, this information uh, in groups of um, women from mosques, in mosques, and there is no so much dis discussion about um, um, sexual violence in family. Most of them say, oh, oh, I know this problem. And it's not so much the stranger in this discussion. Thank you, Thank you so much for this very precious comment, also to put the pic picture back in balance. Um, of course, what you were saying is also based on many, many numbers. Um, and also, this kind of knowledge has been deleted from the discussions, though it's documented that uh, women are mostly endangered in their private homes, not in the public streets. Um, I think, unfortunately, I'm just saying that we must come to an end, but maybe Vicky will have the last word. I want to make a comment on something that just happened right now, and it's the translation. Fremde does actually translate to stranger, someone that you're not familiar with, someone that you don't know. But in Germany, the word Fremde is used as the word foreigner. And that is different. Because one is, in the US we use mostly international, we don't use foreigner anymore because it's just a connotation that, that but it's something that, you know, the meanings behind the words that we use is so powerful. Um, also to your comment, um, someone that I admire very much made a comment to me the other day and he told me, um, Sachen, die im Dunkel wachsen, stinken. <laughs> the most untouchable form of violence is the violence that we don't see, which is the violence that happens in people's homes. It stinks. I think um, it's on me now to thank you all for your attention. Um, be careful with Tagesschau. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I wish you a very nice day until today here in Tatzlav. Thank you.